Hi, so in this module we will be learning about community based palliative care. Palliative care should be a community movement as demonstrated by Kerala. All other states need to follow the same. So we will be talking on the various aspects involved in community based palliative care. Palliative care is best administrated by a group of people working as a team. This team consists of doctors, nurses, social workers, volunteers, etc. drawn from the local community. Hence the importance of community participation is at its most. Home care is also an important part of palliative care and this needs to be made inexpensive. As such, in this module we will learn about how to take self care and concept of respite care. We will study various community participation models of palliative care established in various parts of India. So, Mr. Menon, would you like to share your views on community based palliative care? What exactly do you mean it? Community participation in palliative care is uh, in the since the uh, uh, term denotes it is being led by the community. So, it is not uh, a matter of uh, in a hospital activity or any other activity, but it is being invested by the community around. People drawn from a local area, especially when a palliative care is considered as a uh, locally, uh, you know, um, performing one, and it cannot be done from a distance. So it is purely localized. In that way, what we generally do is to identify the interested people in palliative care and give them a small uh, way of one, one hour, two hour training, say taking um, drawn from different clubs. So, some residence associations may be there, some sports and arts club will be there and some interested philanthropists will be there. So, we will request all those uh, organizations to come and assemble in a particular area. Uh, when we will be able to explain what actually palliative care, you know, how we can establish our palliative care center in this part of the uh, country and um, there are certain uh, things that have to be followed for establishment of palliative care. So, we make a what carpet bombing as we say. Uh, so, one hour uh, you know intro about palliative care will do, uh, will do a lot of things. So, those who are really interested will come forward, we will invite the you know the local <coughs> panchayat or the local municipal chairman, the corporation whatever may be and the local ward member, they are also to be drawn to that uh, particular group and we will form a small group and this group, group will be the unit of that particular palliative care center in that area. We will uh, try to identify those who are uh, in need of uh, palliative care uh, you know uh, intervention. Say for example, the uh, residence associations, they will have a very good list of uh, you know uh, those who are bedridden patients of different nature and the Anganawadi teachers, they are also having uh, a list of such uh, patients and the ASHA workers, they also draw all this, it is a, it is a teamwork or a group exercise, uh, any single person cannot do that, but a group can do wonders, that is how Kerala could be uh, a, a, what you call a, a model for others to follow. So, this is basically the thing that uh, in Kerala we are doing for popularizing palliative care across that the 14 states in the uh, I mean uh, 14 districts in the state of Kerala. So, after the formation of this small nucleus, uh, we try to give them more and more you know advanced training to those who are really interested and uh, make them volunteers. So, we uh, need volunteers, we need social workers, we want need nurses and doctors trained in palliative care. Then only this will become a full fledged you know uh, 
uh, we can have all sorts of people to together to form the team of palliative care. Regarding the home care service, which I would like to throw more light on, home care service is considered to be the soul of palliative care in especially in Kerala when uh, the, the uh, sideline people or those who are below the economic poverty line, uh, they are unable to go to a hospital and get the treatment or whatever care that uh, they are supposed to get. And uh, we have to look into the marginalized people. Those who are having money, they can go to a hospital and get the treatment whatever they need. But those who are marginalized may not be able to um, get any support from the in a, the governing, I mean, uh, the governance or the uh, rulers in power. So, we take those marginalized people into account, we get a list of all those patients and we try to identify, classify them in which manner they should be taken into account. So, with the limited training we uh, give to the volunteers and the doctors, we identify the uh, patients who need palliative care intervention. Then further advanced training will be given to the doctors and nurses to look into their, you know, um, symptom management, physical symptoms, they will have to address the physical symptoms and for all other, you know, psychosocial issues, we seek the help from the volunteers who may be locally popular in that area and with their help we identify the needs of the, you know, categorizing the needs of the patients who are in that particular locality and we uh, reach out to the people who are wealthy. You see, wealthy people are also equally interested in giving money and giving charity, but the only thing is that whatever money they uh, invest, they want to see the result. Somebody uh, 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 taking money from him and doing nothing, that type of thing, uh, uh, man, you know, anybody, uh, nobody will agree to that proposal. But those who are in need of help and those who are ready to do any help, these people are ready to help in what I mean. That is how Kerala uh, uh, um, palliative care works. And in the, uh, in, in a side by side by that, uh, when we take uh, from uh, uh, international scenario, uh, this is Kerala is the first state in any of the uh, nations uh, to, to uh, uh, declare a Kerala state palliative care policy. So, with the introduction of uh, this uh, palliative care policy, all the grama panchayats, all the municipalities, all the district panchayat, all the block panchayats, all have fa facilities for taking care of the patients who are having debilitating illnesses. So, that is a very good, uh, you know, um, move made by the Kerala state. So, moreover, uh, the, the um, uh, availability of morphine and the getting of licenses very simplified in Kerala state. So, many factors contribute to the, you know, uh, the, the way in which we are working at the moment. Thank you. So, according to Mr. Menon, the community participation is a team effort and in fact, we have to have doctors, nurses and other paramedicals selected from the local community. And in case if we do not have doctors locally, then IT could be an answer. We have to use information technology and that has a major role in yeah. palliative care. So, telemedicine could come in, teleconferencing can be done with the doctor. Consultations can be made. So, that we obtain consultations so as to make palliative care cheap because if a center is charging lakhs of rupees for the death of a patient, again we cannot term it as palliative care. Palliative care means it should be accessible, it should not be very expensive and rather it should be complementary service given by the community to the patient because there are absence of resources, hence the present resources have to be very carefully utilized. So, do you find any role of students in this campaign? Yes, definitely. 
Um, when we talk about the student community, we have to understand the uh, role they have to play because uh, we know uh, when we take into the international scenario, aging is a, a very important factor because with the advancement of science and technology, uh, you know more you know treatment I mean uh, diseases have come within their fold and they can uh, be treated in a way. So, uh, which means that their age is uh, uh, taken to another level. Now, a report says that um, nearly 71.3 years is the average uh, life span of an individual, of a male individual. So, along with that there are some you know drawbacks also. When we uh, become aged, naturally some physical uh, you know ailments are likely and uh, falling are likely your vision will be impaired partially or fully and you may not be able to remember things dementia is likely to creep in the way and other you know um, a lot of things are coming so uh, blood sugar you know the uh, diabetic patients the hypertension patients a lot of things are coming in the way of aging that is one area in the case of students student is a very very powerful uh, I may say powerful medium to, to do whatever that is needed for the sake of the community around. So, these students have uh, high potential, high what you call uh, they have uh, got a very good thinking, they know uh, what to do, they are very creative and they are very potential, they are talented in a way. So, taking into account the uh, resources available in the students, we can transform it to uh, the, the care of uh, for the benefit of the uh, elderly. So, in a way the students can be of much help to the care of the elderly. That is how we uh, introduced our YES project. YES is uh, Youth Empowerment Service. We have uh, opened up a separate department itself for the care of the aged by uh, uh, inducting uh, as many uh, youth or the students as possible. We have already formulated a master plan uh, to, to um, encourage uh, educational institutions to come up so that we can have uh, an orientation program about pilot ticket students and we can have a volunteer training of 16 hours as as per the guidelines stipulated by the World Health Organization and many, many other you know courses uh, can also be given especially this particular course foundation course can be given to the uh, volunteers and students uh, so that they know for sure what else to be done what not to be done and that. So, this youth empowerment is a very good initiative taken by National Association of Pilot Care for Ayush and Integrative Medicine to address the uh, cause of the elderly. The students who are with NCC, the students who NSS. are with NSS, the students who opt for SUPW, socially useful productive work, can they be in any way groomed into palliative care? Can be, they be utilized to give their services not outside, but within their home to the people who are elderly or those who need specialized care. Why? Because we are improving these students to develop empathy as well as compassion, which is very much required and in many ways it is lacking amongst most of us. Then what I have seen in palliative care is that those people who are very closely giving care to the patient, they suffer from burnout. Burnout is a situation where you are overworked. You work beyond your capacity and then you start losing interest in life. It is worse than depression. So, Mr. Menon, would you suggest a way to handle burnout? 
every machine has a capacity every machine has a manufacturing date as well as an expiry date suppose if you take a laptop for example uh, there is likely uh, to be a manufacturing date and there is likely to be an expiry date when you are supposed to repair it but in the case of a human being um, he cannot be repaired all on a sudden it takes a, a lot of things to do before getting it repaired so man is always a machine which cannot be repaired constantly but we have to face a situation when repairing is highly necessary take for example when i am uh, having some uh, incurable disease and my wife is taking care of me uh, and the only member of the family to take care of me naturally uh, she is uh, having 24 into 7 work she does not have time to sleep she does not have uh, you know uh, time to have her you know uh, sports or any other activity whatever that is uh, uh, needed by her she does not find any time to read any newspaper or taking care take yeah. entertainment and all that taking care of the children uh, whether their you know curriculum is properly taken into account and all that a lot of things financial constraints how to manage the next days uh, you know um daily routine and all that so who are to be uh, contacted how we can get the money and all that lot of planning is required administration is full in the hands of the uh, carer so naturally um over a period of time when you do a things over a period of time you become monotonous it's a natural uh, course of thing so even though a carer is uh, uh, becoming monotonous she cannot uh, do a with present task because there is no other person to to, uh, to, to what do you call uh, share the baton to that pet person so there is likely to be burnouts we call it burnout so what we usually do is to take uh, both the uh, patient and the um, carer in a particular locality or a, what we call a day care center or a respite center for enjoyment we know for sure and the carer knows for sure the patient knows for sure that his life is almost coming to an end let them enjoy so uh for enjoyment of their um, you know uh, sometime during their lifetime together and nobody will be there to help them out anyway we will help them by giving all those uh, you know vegetables whatever that is needed and keep there in that particular respite so that they can do whatever that is needed that is the uh, concept of respite so we give it, keep them alone for some time they can refresh themselves and come back to their you know homes after say one week or one month whatever may it be so this is the concept of respite and day care center is another you know uh, place where they can uh, sit at leisure there the the carer can uh, take leave for some st- some time so the carer can uh, take leave for some time hand it over to the authorities of the day care center and uh, uh, she can come in the evening after having uh, done all the in your daily routines so these are the two things we are uh, working on um, you know in the uh, in different parts of the country and abroad so it is working very beautifully and we hope that uh, if the same trend continues you know the burnout can be reduced to the uh, minimum as far as possible so just to be more illustrative let us understand the that there is a relay and in this relay race if a single person tries to run all the laps what happens he is going to suffer from burnout why he is trying to overwork so in case of care caregiver has to find out time for respite for rest for recreation and is spending that time for leisure as per his or her wish and this respite is given by some other person from the community from the family or maybe by taking the patient for a small duration to a day care center to a hospice to a respite care center so that the other person gets rejuvenated 
even after spending only a few hours left to her or him to be enjoyed or utilized as per their wish. We cannot imagine that when we are living with a terminally ill patient, the patient is in deep agony, may be shouting or crying 24 hours. And the person who gives the care is so much disheartened, he or she may not be able to sleep because he is catering to the needs of the patient 24 hours. And that is why palliative care is required to give relief to the patient so that the patient takes rest and when the patient is resting the caregiver also gets some rest. Even more, the caregiver may have his or her own assignments to fulfill and any sort of respite care will help him or her to cope with her own tasks. With this, we are ending this session. Thank you.